Has anyone played Guess Who? It's a game where you play somebody else and the idea is to try and ask as few questions as possible to work out which card they have. They're pictures of people, some have hats, some have glasses, um, some are men, some are women, some have beards, some have no hair, some have long hair, and you have to ask questions and try and ask as few as possible to guess which card they have. Now, if you haven't played that, we could play it now. We could say, I am thinking of a member of staff at Baines, and you've got to try and ask questions which I can only give yes or no answers to, to work out who it is. So I'm thinking of somebody. Um, you could say, is it Mrs. Bannister? And I could say, no, that's one question. You could say, is it Mrs. McPhee? And I could say, no. And you could say, is it Mrs. Weston? And I could say, no. You've already asked three questions and there are still about 20 members of staff left. So it's about how you carefully ask a question with a yes or no answer to try and split them up a bit. So you could say, instead of asking names, you could say, do they work in key stage two? Now, if I say yes, you know that it's definitely not gonna be Mrs. Rothwell, Miss Bennett, Mr. Yorchok, um, at the moment, Mrs. Mrs. Latimer, Mrs. McPhee, Mrs. Gorry. So just by asking a question like that, we've split the groups into people who are in key stage two and people who don't work in key stage two, which means they work in key stage one. So with that simple question, you could also ask the question, um, do they have blonde hair? Now we'd know then that's not Mrs. Bennett. We'd definitely know it's not Mrs. McPhee. We'd definitely know that it's not um, uh, Mrs. Andrew, but it could be Mrs. Holland, or it could be Mrs. Hedges, or it could be Mrs. Rothwell. It's about asking questions that split it up quickly. If you just keep saying, is it Mrs. Bannister? No, one question. Is it Mrs. Rothwell? No. I'm thinking of Mr. Yorchok, say. Let's say I'm thinking of Mr. Yorchok. Is it Mr. Leah? No. Is it Mrs. Tinney? No. If you do that, you might take 20, 30 questions before you go, is it Mr. Yorchok? Yes. So it's about careful questioning. So I'm going to take guess who off here. And I'm going to have a go with, um, let's put some fruits out here. There is an apple, my fruit bowl. Things have gone a bit sort of dried up in my fruit bowl because I don't eat a great deal. There's a peach. There is an orange, there is a lemon, a lime, there is a lemon, and there is a uh, avocado. Not an avocado, I picked up the wrong one. There's a pepper. I do know what an avocado is. There's one here. We'll use that in a minute. So you could, I could say to you, I am thinking about one of these. I'm thinking about a fruit. You're going to say, is it a vegetable? Who cares? I'm thinking about one of these. Now you could say to me, is it a peach? No. Is it an apple? No. Is it a lemon? No. Is it a pepper? No. Is it a lime? No. Oh, it must be an orange. But that took you five questions to do it. Rubbish questioning. Let's have a look. What could be a question that you could ask that would split it up into two groups of about the same size? Obviously, you might be able to ask one when the answer is yes, we have three on one side and three on the other. It might not be possible. So pause the video and think about a question you could ask. Okay, so did you come up with some questions? Right, let's have a look. You could ask, I don't know. You could say, I think a good question might be, can you or do people usually eat the skin of this? Now, if we think of an orange, I don't know many people who eat the skin of an orange. You're probably gonna say, well, I do, I really like it. But generally, people don't. We've got the lime. People don't usually eat lime skin. Yeah, we may grate a little bit of rind off lemons and limes and oranges, but we don't sit there and eat the skin. They're quite bitter. So there's the no. Do people eat the skin of this fruit? No. Now, when you bite an apple, some people don't eat the skin, but lots of people just bite straight into it and eat the skin. Peppers, when you chop them up, not many people peel peppers, although they are nice char grilled and with the skin peeled off. And here we've got a peach and most people, even though they wouldn't eat that one because it's a wrinkly old peach. Look at that, it's been in the fruit bowl since lockdown started, I think, poor thing. Anyhow, most people would just bite into that as well. So just with one question, I've split them up into two piles. I've got the yes, eat the skin, and I've got the no, eat the skin. So I'm not gonna write down every question that we've had, but yes, eat the skin, 
no, eat the skin. Because you've got two arrows there. Now, let's try and separate these ones. How could we separate these fruits? We can't separate them in two equal sides because there's three of them. But can you think of a question that we could ask that could separate those? Okay, now, I don't know. It's quite hard, this one is. Um, really, we could look at colours. Is your fruit you're thinking of yellow? If you say no, we know that what we've got left here are these two. If we say yes, we know what we've got here is the lemon. So this first question here was, do people generally eat the skin of this? We've got the no line here, what we call a branch. Here is the next question, which was, is it yellow? Yes. If you answer yes to those two questions, no to the first question, and yes to this question, boom, we know it's a lemon. However, we've got these two here. Maybe, maybe you could ask the colour question again. Is yours green? Yes, it's a lime. Is yours green? No, it's an orange. So we have what we call a branch there. You may have had your own questions and do it in a different way. Let's go down the yes branch. Do you usually, here we would be up here, do people usually eat the skin of your plant, your fruit, or whatever we're going to call it? Yes. Now, we have now got some other questions. We need another question now. So we've got an apple, a pepper, and a peach. What question could we ask to split those up? We could ask colour, but look, some apples are red, some are green, some are yellowy. I don't know if colour's going to be a good one. This peach is like a deep red, and then it's orange. I don't know if colour is going to be a good one. Could there be a better question that we could ask that could split those up? Okay, I thought of one. I think it would work. What about, is there a stone in the middle of your fruit? Now, is there a stone in an apple? No, it's not, is there? Because it has got pips in it. So we put a no down here. Is there a stone in there? No, an apple doesn't have a stone in it. Is there a stone in a pepper? No, there isn't a stone in a pepper. However, is there a stone in a peach? Yes, we've split them up. So if we were going to ask these questions, we're now using less questions. The idea is to try and do it as quickly as possible. Last one, we've got an apple and we've got a pepper. What could be a question for that? There could be many questions for that one, I think. You could say, can you make it into a crumble? I've never had a pepper crumble. Is it nice with goat's cheese? Mm, apples might be, peppers might be, I don't know. It's up to you to come up with your own questions. But if you look now, let's say we just said, can you make a crumble out of it? No. We've got a pepper. Oh yes, we've got an apple. No, we've got a pepper. So now we can go through these questions if we can remember them. I haven't written them all down, but I'll just see if we can remember them. Okay, so the first question was, do people usually eat the skin of your fruit? So let's say I'm thinking of a question, uh, of a fruit now. I'm thinking of one. Let's have a look. Um, let's say it's, I'm thinking of the apple. Um, do you eat the skin of this fruit? Yes. Does it have a stone in the middle? No. Do you make a crumble out of it? Yes. Let's see, I'm thinking of the peach. Do people eat the skin of this? Yes. Is there a stone in it? Yes, it's a peach. Let's say I'm thinking of the lime. Um, let's have a look, we did colours, didn't we, Dan? That's what I've forgotten. Do you eat the skin of this generally? No. Is it yellow? No. Is it orange? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Is it orange? Um, is, it, is it orange? I can't remember what the question was there. Should have written them down. Anyhow, this is your usual mistake that I do on things like this. It's about asking questions, as few questions as possible, to get to the bottom of it. And this, believe it or not, is how computers find information when there's lots of it around. If you've got a huge database of people and you want to find somebody, it may be their address, it may be their age, it may be how many people are in their family, but computers can do that just using yes and no. One type of question which is no good, which you must not use and computers cannot use, is let's say we're separating these and say your first question is, is it nice? 
for is it tasty or does it look pretty? Now you probably laugh and go, they're silly questions, but they are questions that a computer does not know. A computer does not know if a, that is nice. You might think oranges are great. I, yeah, they're nice. But if I did that, I might go, Ugh, I hate oranges, it would go down that branch. So it cannot be a question that has a value attached to it. And by value, I don't mean a number. I mean somebody's value, their judgment. Oh, is it pretty? Is it nice? Is it good on toast? The questions I asked were definite, could, uh, definite questions, perhaps not the skin one. Some people do eat the skin, but I said, do people generally eat the skin of this? Let's introduce some more. We've got a mango, we've got an avocado, we've got an aubergine, and we've got a melon. So what I want you to do is devise careful questions so you're not asking, you'd, someone wouldn't have to ask more than say five questions to work out which of these you're thinking of. It's about, you can draw pictures of a lemon, a lime, I'm not gonna give you these, I can't send one out to everybody, that would be crazy, but you could draw a picture of a lemon, a lime, an orange, a pepper. I've got a yellow pepper, but you might wanna do a different color. An apple, a peach, a melon, aubergine, avocado, and a mango. You might want to draw those and think of ways that you can divide those using just yes or no. There's no point in saying, how many of them are there? Are they nice? There's got to be questions that can be asked with a yes or no that a computer would be able to think about and go, yes, that has got a stone in. No, that hasn't got a stone in. Yes, that has got pips in the middle. Um, no, that does not have pips in the middle. It has a stone in it. Um, many more questions that we could come up with. Can you have a go at separating these? If you want to just start with doing a branching database for the first ones we looked at, to make it easier, have a go. Try and use different questions. But if you want to be brave, have a go at adding the melon, the avocado and the mango. You might do some questions and go, actually, I could do that, make it even quicker. Because like we said at the beginning in the game, guess who? If you said, is it Philip? No. Is it Anne? No. Is it Thomas? No. Is it Bill? No. You would lose the game. Computers don't want to spend ages going through everything, and neither do we. We want to know what the information is. So this is going to be the first, this is the first lesson in some work on what we call branching databases, and we'll move into using Purple Mash for it, maybe this week, maybe next week, when I've worked out how best to show it to you. Okay, good luck. Send me some pictures of what you've got.